uh, sitting from the my basin uh, bottles and looking uh, into the uh, adulting uh, world of the products of DSI. There are uh, basically two of them, uh, one is the Maxi and one is the Pico. And uh, they serve different purposes, you can say. Um, we start off with the Mike C model. Uh, it is uh, round water model. It's known as round water model, but it's uh, more correct to say that it is an integrated catchment model uh, product, uh, which considers say, all the water within the within the uh, catchment being kind of one resource wrapped into one model. Uh, the Maxi model contains, as can be seen from the sketch here, a number of, uh, of processes, a large number of processes. And uh, just to take the tool around, uh, precipitation, no melt, is of course one of the important sources of water in this, in this uh, framework here. It contains the evapotranspiration, infiltration, as a function of uh, the vegetation that we have locally. It uh, has a preparation for the onset. <coughs> Groundwater flow, as well as the uh, separated groundwater flow. Included is, uh, we'll come back to also a little bit later, also a uh, coupling between the product called MIP 11, which actually deals with hydrodynamics in the rivers and lakes, so that means the surface water. We have an interaction between the machine model and this MIP 11 model. Time, surface flow can be taken into account, sheet flow uh, into my sheet as well from the surface. And uh, irrigation, if there's an issue within the particular bottle area that you're working with, you can define your demands and it can be implemented within the model. On top of that, it contains also uh, water quality, where we can describe different water quality processes within the different uh, areas, so in the different uh, features of the model. So, kind of the same picture, but just in a different uh, in a different way, schematized here. All the different processes which I can contain within my C, uh, you have as a user the possibility to say, some processes are, are maybe more important than others in particular type of projects. So you can actually go in my C for the different processes that are there, to say some of those descriptions, I need a very uh, high level, uh, say, uh, mathematical based description, very, very thorough, or some of the other products, uh, sorry, some of the other features, you may say, this could do with a less accurate maybe description. Simple methods, uh, simple method has the benefits typically that it maybe needs less data, but indeed also that they are typically generally faster to simulate. So it could be a method of also optimizing the sort of overall performance of your model simulations when we're running a, a machine model. We say it's a modeling framework. It is. Uh, it contains or it needs uh, different types of data. Uh, you can supply GIS data, map data of different kinds, gridded data. It is a spatial distributed data that is required to do the different uh, parameter descriptions in my C. Uh, time series for all the parameters that go into uh, into the modeling framework. You can link up with databases, so some of the parameter descriptions, parameter values that you may have in other programs or other databases can be sort of connected into uh, into my C. As said, uh, we are coupling the Michael Adam model. We can back to that in slightly more detail what that is, but we're coupling that on top of the my C model. And uh, we actually do have also possibility to couple the model, which is called MAUS. It stands for Modeling of Urban Sewers. And so it's a, it's a pipe model, so we can actually simulate sort of the interaction between, say, groundwater and uh, water going into or out of the uh, sewer pipes. Finally, the irrigation is there as an option. So the standard steps you could say for using models is to uh, define the model setup, add in all your data. You need to do a pre-processing of those data to make sure that sort of everything fits within the model, everything is, uh, is ready to do and simulation, and we can run it and we can evaluate the outcome. Output from my C will be many different things, of course, as we do have all these different types of processes. 
we want. So uh, going from stream hybrid lab, different type of uh, time series plots, map plots of the different uh, components within the model, groundwater, surface water, flooding, whatever. And uh, at the end, it gives us also a complete uh, water balance to just know where we have the water, how much water came into the different components of, uh, of the model framework. Just to give a quick glance of the user interface, uh, you will see during this presentation, most of the uh, products have a sort of a well-wrapped, relatively easy, accessible user interface. So uh, generally with a, a tree view sort of on the left where you just sort of walk your way through different type of parameters, specify them at different locations. And uh, once you're done with that, you are ready to, <coughs> to do your simulation then. So just to specify or to show a few examples, this is a, a time series of uh, precipitation that will be used in this model area. The area where it's applied, uh, or it has been observed, you can say, is the area marked in red here. So we're working sort of with different zones where we apply different type of data. So uh, very easy, accessible uh, interface for the, for the users to, to, to work with. Some of the examples of the spatial distributed data, uh, this is a, a vegetation map uh, that goes in with different, uh, different codes. Here are the numbers with different codes, and these codes will then relate to the list of, uh, of vegetation types, so to say, that are listed over in the um, tree view on the left side there. Inside my team, we can do the processing based on the uh, catchment boundaries. We process what, uh, all the different type of data that goes in, and at the end, just before the simulation, we do have data that are, say, limited to just an area that we actually model. Uh, so there's a processing possibility inside, and uh, as said, a lot of different types of resources can be extracted from, from simulation of my uh, This is an example of a, uh, a groundwater head, so a groundwater level in the area. Just as a still picture from one simulation. Uh, but these spatial distributed maps are, of course, uh, a key output and selected points. You can extract time series and those kind of uh, uh, results that can be then further processed if you need to. So, final thought was just uh, to show you the um, water balance, the final water balance. Uh, or plot that you will see when you have completed the simulation. So literally we just, uh, we will show you how much water sort of is into the model and where are the volume in the different components or different parts of the model after the simulation is finished. Uh, this serves, I guess, two purposes. It's nice to know where the, where the water is. If it's like on the groundwater or in the channels or where it is. And it's also good to know, of course, the total area of the water plant, which is up on the left. Corner there. So if there's a big error, it could be that the model say, setup is not really optimal. And we need to fine tune it a little bit to reduce the error to have a much more, uh, say, reliable simulation. So a very, uh, very important output for an integrated hydrological model like Maxi. So where, uh, where is it used? Well, um, as an integrated model for hydrological simulations. There are many different uh, type of applications that can be uh, executed with this. Wetlands is obvious, uh, different uh, climate change impact scenarios, uh, drought, drought planning could be one of them, uh, environmental river flows also. But basically what most of these products, uh, projects are about is to, to know where the water is, right? how much water we have available, where is the water resources uh, within our entire Catchment. It's on the surface, it's down in the groundwater part, where is it? So just to show just one example, uh, the Okawanga Delta in the Botswana. My sheet has been applied as part of this project where, as we know, it's a very, very, very big area. Uh, so the flooded area expands from, let's say, 9 to 16,000 square kilometers. Very big difference from draft uh, to flood uh, conditions, and uh, wildlife, of course, moves in response to that. The purpose of this project that, uh, that we were part of was to, 
to uh, ensure a long-term conservation of the delta. And uh, my team was a key element in that to, uh, to assess where is the water and how can we sort of maintain it for longer periods. And uh, different scenarios were simulated and just to pick up one of the many results here, uh, just a plot to say, talking about scenarios, we're comparing what if we do this compared to what if we're doing that. So this shows uh, a change in the flood levels if we sort of change how we maintain the delta so to say. There are different blockages with vegetation. If we remove them, if we keep them, what are the difference there? How do we optimize the the, the water so to say within the delta? So one of the uh, many projects where my see is doing one. Just to uh, <coughs> briefly mention about the other uh, the hydrological model is, uh, is the feed, <coughs> the feed flow model, which uh, looks primarily within the groundwater now. So it's a, an advanced model for groundwater modeling. Uh, it contains a finite element code. So it's uh, either 1D elements, 2D elements, or 3D elements. So it's a fully three dimensional model. And uh, there are also uh, horizontal and vertical, and also asymmetrical uh, simulations. Feedflow does flow simulations and it does transform simulations. So flow, mass, and in particular heat transport is one of the very, say, um, those type of projects have been uh, very much used, uh, or applied with Mike Sheep for, for a longer period of time. Multi-species transport, density flow, and uh, variable, maybe saturated, unsaturated uh, flow conditions within the groundwater. Uh, so as such, it's a very advanced model. It has also a, an advanced user interface, but still relatively easy accessible. Does parallel processing, uh, processing and uh, the interface is kind of open so that you have the possibility again to do bits and pieces yourself and plug that into the, uh, into the program. Like Mike Xi, uh, we have a possibility to link feed flow also with like 11, so we can actually take in the stream flow in, in relatively large detail on the surface and then couple that to the, uh, to the groundwater computations done with feed flow. <coughs> so, advanced groundwater modeling, there are a lot of different types of applications uh, dealing with groundwater, different problems, different uh, interesting aspects in groundwater. But you can say basically, if we look at this again now, in comparison with like she, we're looking at all the water within the catchment. In feed flow, we are mainly concerned with the groundwater. Where is it? Where will it go? What quality does it have? Etc. Et so there's a kind of a difference between how to apply or when to apply the like she package compared to when to apply the feed flow package. As they both concern the groundwater, you can say it's good to know this difference. Just a few plots here on uh, from the feed flow models. You can do very large scale regional models, of course, but uh, also we can go into very, very detailed simulations looking at very special uh, features. In this case, uh, an underground uh, structure uh, for uh, liquid gas uh, containing. So here's where the, the flexible mesh, the unstructured mesh of feed flow really has its benefit. You can say going from very big cells, we zoom in to the structure that we are dealing with here and we try to build up and we have elements that are very, very small because we need a very fine flow resolution around the structure, but then again further outside, a bit away from the structure, we can deal with larger elements. And this is where the model is really, really strong because we have this flexibility. And this is how it looks from above. So the variability in the, in the grid resolution is an important feature. As I said in the beginning, the idea is to give a relatively brief overview, and uh, so that concludes the uh, hydrological part of the survey.